Hello dear viewers, welcome to another episode of this educational program, which is intended for students of grade 12. In this lesson, we're going to revise set book questions from module 2, unit 4. Also, we're going to revise questions related to episode 4 of Shakespeare's play, Henry V. First, let's take a short break, then we'll be right back. So, please stay with us. Welcome back, dear students. In this lesson, we're going to revise set book questions from module two, unit four. And also, later on in the program, we're going to revise questions relate, related to Shakespeare's play, Henry V. Now let's start with set book questions. Before we start, I would like to share with you some tips for set book and literature related questions. The first recommendation is that you should write your answer in meaningful sentences. By meaningful sentence, I mean that your words should express a complete thought. You should use uh, the following pattern, for example. Subject, verb, followed by an object. Okay? Second recommendation is that any reasonable re response or answer is going to be considered correct. Okay? So, also, remember that you don't have to wrote, learn the answers. You don't have to memorize all your answers because you will waste your time just memorizing or learning by heart all the questions and also all the answers. And uh, that is uh, a bit of a waste of time. So all you have to do is to uh, try to get the general idea of the question and of the answer, try to understand the answer well, and then try to express it using your own words. Also, remember that the questions are of general nature, so you are not going to be asked to uh, give uh, details. Okay? Now, let's move on and start answering some questions related to module 2 unit 4, which is entitled, The Earth at Risk. Now, question number one reads, which are the most pressing environmental issues facing the world today? Okay, so which are the most uh, ecological or environmental problems facing the world these days? Some of the answers you can come up with is pollution or air pollution, desertification, global warming, deforestation and droughts. You can also think of uh, environmental problems such as water scarcity or water paucity. Another word for water uh, scarcity is water shortage. Uh, treacherous wildfires, very dangerous uh, wildfires that cannot be controlled and also flooding or floods. So how are you going to answer that question about the most prominent or the most pressing environmental problems in the world these days. You answer it like so. Pollution, water scarcity, and treacherous wildfires are some of the most pressing environmental problems. Now, instead of pollution, water scarcity, and treacherous wildfires, you can add any environmental or ecological problem you might want to add. Okay? So you don't have to uh, stick to this answer per word. You can change and manipulate your answer the way you want. For example, you can say global warming and water scarcity are some of the most pressing environmental problems. And that will be accepted, will be corrected, and uh, considered as a full mark for that question. Okay? Another question reads, what are the main causes of desertification? Remember the definition of desertification. It means the process by which a fertile land, a productive land, becomes desert. So some of the causes, you can answer in this way, desertification usually occurs in dry areas where there is no rain and where the climate is harsh. Also, desertification occurs as a result of human activities such as deforestation, which means cutting down trees at a global scale, 
overgrazing the land or over cultivation of the land. So a complete sentence would read like this. Desertification occurs as a result of human activities such as deforestation, overgrazing, and overcultivation of the land, as well as harsh climate. Next question, what are the main causes of desertification? So here is the complete answer actually. So climate change and human activities such as deforestation, overgrazing, and overcultivation are the main causes of deforestation. What might happen as a result of the destruction of the top layer of the soil? Now, this question can be asked differently. The question can be asked in this way. How does deforestation affect us and our environment? Now, remember from the beginning when I gave you some tips and recommendations on how to answer set book questions, I said that you don't have to wrote, learn or to memorize the answers because the question can be different or can be expressed in a different way. And therefore, if you tr you're trying to memorize the question and its answer, you are wasting your time because you're trying to memorize both. And at the end, the question might be expressed in or may, might be uh, given in a different wording. And therefore, you feel uh, at loss. So the answer to this question is, as a result of deforestation, farmers can't graze their animals anymore. Also, we can say that people's health is affected because of the dust traveling long distances. The people who depend on the land for food have to move to greener areas to survive. So many uh, of the families will be displaced. They will move from uh, the place where they live to a place where there is green, uh, green grass or green areas. Some people may die because of shortage of food and water. So because of water shortage, many people would not survive in such a harsh uh, environment where there is de deforestation. Now, the land can no longer be used for growing crops. So the land becomes barren, infertile, unproductive, not suitable for any agricultural activities. Now, next question, how do you think it is possible to slow down the, pro the progress of desertification? How can we tackle such an environmental issue? First of all, you can answer in this way by saying, I think it will require a worldwide wide campaign to improve agricultural methods, to regenerate plant life by reforestation, which is the opposite of deforestation. So by uh, regenerating plant life or uh, planting trees and also by conserving soil fertility. How do trees prevent desertification? To answer this question, you need to talk about the benefits of planting trees. So tree roots prevent soil erosion. Remember the definition of the word erosion. It means the washing away of the top layer of the soil. Without trees, there's nothing to stop the wind and rain or elements of nature from blowing or washing away the top layer of soil. And therefore, the roots of the trees will be exposed and uh, the trees themselves will not protect the soil. Here is uh, the part that is the top layer of the soil that should be protected because it is important for vegetation. Okay, now next question is, why is the Amazon rainforest important to men? This answer can apply to the Amazon rainforest as well as forests in general. So, the answer is, the Amazon rainforest reduces the level of carbon dioxide, CO2, in the atmosphere and provides us with oxygen. Also, the rainforest provides food, shelter, and medicine to native populations, to the local inhabitants. For them, this is the 
place where they get their food, their shelter, and also their medicine. What are most soya beans used for? Soya beans are used as animal food. Also, it is used as uh, food for human consumption. So we have soya milk, we have soya cheese, as well as some creative cook uh, invented or made soya bean dry curry. Also, many vegetarian foods are based on soya beans. Next question, why are the rainforests being destroyed? So we talked about the importance of forests in general and in particular the Amazon rainforest and we mentioned those uh, benefits. The question here is asking you about the, the reason why people are destroying these rainforests. If they are so important, if they are essential to the environment as well as the local inhabitants, then why are people destroying them? So the answer to this question is forests are cleared to make more land for farmers and ranchers. Ranchers are uh, people who take their animals to the field so that uh, they can eat the grass. Now, rainforests are also being destroyed because of oil companies which are trying to find more oil. And in the process, they destroy, as you can see in this picture, they destroy the, these forests. Also, loggers sell the hardwood from these trees, and therefore they need to cut down those uh, forests. Next question reads, men affect the environment negatively in different ways. How is that? Well, Man is responsible for polluting the environment. Man is destroying animal habitats because these forests are the habitat, the place where many exotic birds, many exotic animals and butterflies. So, also poaching animals is a human activity that affects the balance of nature. And by poaching, we mean illegal hunting. Man is misusing natural resources such as water, soil, and air. Now, what is water used for? One of the most important, maybe second most important natural resource is water. Okay? And the first most important one is definitely air. So, what is water used for? We depend on water for, for our survival. It is the source of life. Where there is no water, there's no life. Water is used for drinking. It's used for hygiene, for cleaning and washing. It's also used for washing cars, for watering plants, and for, in agriculture, it's used for uh, irrigation. Also, Water is used in, uh, for, or for entertainment, such as in aquaparks. Now, next question. What, if, what efforts did Kuwait exert to combat the problem of water shortage? So, to combat the problem of water shortage, Kuwait developed desalination plants. Okay? And desalination means a process by which salt is removed from water so that it can be used for drinking and also for uh, washing. In addition to desalination plants, Kuwait is studying ways to improve efficiency in the use of water for agriculture. Also, Kuwait has never stopped raising people's awareness to use water wisely through mass media such as TV, newspapers, and the radio. The government managed to curtail the unwarranted consumption of water. By unwarranted means the illegal consumption of water has been curtailed. Next question, how can we contribute to cutting back on the usage of water? It means how can we save water, simply? The answer for this is that 
we can do that by taking a shower instead of having a bath. Okay, so you can read on top a sentence which says that an eight minute shower uses about 62 liters of water compared to 80 liters used in the average bath. So it's noticeably that by taking a shower instead of having a bath, you can save a large amount of water. Also, we should reuse the water used for washing vegetables in order to water plants. So instead of draining the water that we use for washing vegetables, we can save that, put it in a watering can, and use it to water the garden plants. We should make it a habit to wash the car using a bucket filled of, of water instead of using a hose. And we should act quickly and fix any leakage in the water pipes. Okay, now let's talk about a question which is asking you concerning how to preserve natural resources in general. Okay, so try to suggest some practical ways. So try to provide some solutions on how to preserve natural resources. The answer for this could be, we can preserve natural resources by recycling and reusing material, by protecting forests from wildfires, by protecting the soil through planting trees, and also by organizing campaigns to raise people's awareness, which means through educating people. Okay, dear students, now we're going to move and answer some questions related to literature, to uh, a play, Henry V. And today we're going to concentrate on episode four. So here is a summary of the episode, but there are two mistakes. Try to find them out. Let's read these sentences together. But remember that there are two facts which are not right. So, first sentence reads, the English were forcing the French troops to retreat. And this is after the British won their battle uh, of, uh, in Harfleur. Second sentence, Henry ordered his soldiers to treat local residents respectfully and decently. The King of France sent a messenger to Henry to provoke him. Henry replied that he was determined to surrender to the French. Before the ultimate confrontation, the French became tense and anxious. All warriors thought the Dauphin was brave. They also thought the English were foolish and rising there or risking their lives. Okay, so two of these sentences are not correct. They hold two details which are not accurate. Now let's go through the, the summary again. And throughout my slides, I will show you, or I will tell two sentences, and you need to find out the mistakes. So sentence number one, the English were forcing the French troops to retreat. Henry ordered his soldiers to treat local residents dec decently, respectfully, and also with uh, dignity. The King of France sent a messenger to Henry to provoke him and also to challenge him. Henry replied that he was determined to defeat the French. Before the ultimate confrontation, before the final battle, the French became tense and anxious. Some warriors started to doubt the integrity of the Dauphin and thought he was a hypocrite. Some warriors, including princes and dukes, thought that the English were foolish and risking their lives. However, some others thought that the English were extremely brave and audacious. Have you found the two incorrect information or details? Well, here they are. The first one is that Henry replied that he was determined to surrender to the French. And the correct answer is that Henry replied that he was determined 
to defeat the French and send them back or uh, def defeated and humiliated. For the second uh, detail, which is wrong, is this. All warriors thought the Dauphin was brave. Actually, there was a split decision between two parts. Some warriors thought that the Dauphin was a hypocrite. And by hypocrite, we mean that he pretends to be strong and audacious, while in fact he was a coward. Okay? So some warriors thought the Dauphin was a hypocrite. Good, now let's deal with questions. First question reads, how should civilians be treated during wartime? The answer to this is obvious. Troops should treat the local residents decently and with utmost care. You can answer it in a different way by saying troops should treat local residents respectfully, okay, decently, with dignity, and so on. Another question reads, how's the atmosphere like when preparing for an ultimate confrontation? Before a, fi a final battle, restless restlessness, anxiety, and vigilance prevail, and tension builds up. Now, what difficulties might soldiers encounter during wars? Well, they might be captured, they, might be, they may be starved, get exhausted, or be outnumbered. What are the qualities of good soldiers? Now, soldiers should be brave, should be courageous, valiant, and exceptionally audacious. Also, soldiers should be confident in their victory. They should believe in their cause and they should defend the, that cause till the end of their lives. Also, we can answer this question by saying they shouldn't be hypocrite. They should be true to themselves and they shouldn't pretend to be strong while uh, they are otherwise. Okay? Last question, how would a defeated army feel? Well. A defeated army would feel humiliated and dishonored. So if a defeated army feels humiliated and also uh, feels, as you can see, dishonored, then a victorious army would feel proud of, of themselves and they would feel also that they have achieved something. Okay? So dear students, this lesson has come to an end and as you uh, have uh, followed, I have tackled some questions related to episode uh, 4 from uh, Literature Time, Henry V, and also I have answered some questions from module 2, unit 4. Okay? Dear viewers, thank you very much for your time and attention. I would like to meet you very soon. Till then, take good care and goodbye. Mm -hmm.